everybody and welcome back to the channel. It is I, the noob. So, as it is customary on a Sunday, we're going to look at the pre-orders and what's new for the week ahead. I'm going to tell you now, it's going to be a short one because there's not a lot this week. But we've got some interesting news about Wrath and Rapture coming up at the end. So, stay tuned. We're going to talk about that. And now it's on with the show. First to kick off, I'm really sorry guys. We have got no Age of Sigma related stuff. Everything that's been released has been the books, the audiobook, and the terrain. But we've known about that for a couple of weeks. There's nothing new on pre-order. Because everything at the moment is Blackstone Fortress related. So when I know more, which will probably be next Saturday, which is the same time as everyone else, I'll let you know. But GW have released some modeling information, which is to do with the paint box, which is on the screen. And they've released the Citadel project box, which I will go over later. And they've released the single paint racks, which is all good for storing the amount of paint needed just for one model. But as you can see in front of you, the cheapest box is going to be the paint box, which is £30. It contains two trays and a side that fits, I believe, 23 paints. So it's a nice small project box. But what I didn't realise, it's the size of a skirmish battle foam box that they sell. So if you've got a way of transporting these and you've only got that size... Is all in the same size, so it's not going to take up too much room if you've got a transporter in one place, which I thought was a good, nice touch. But is that enough for the average GW gamer? I'm not quite sure, but perhaps the next one is. And for me, this is the worthy buy. This is the Citadel Project Box. It is £50. It comes with five trades. One of them being your accessories, like your clippers and your brushes. And the rest are paint pots, which is fantastic. It you So you've got four trays of paint and it holds an additional 63. And they've compared this to the size of the large force box. So if you've got one of those harnesses and you fit, you can fit two or three in them. If you need to take your paints with you, if you go to a lot of, uh, if you go to a lot of tournaments, or if you just like to travel with all your stuff, it can all fit neatly together. It's not going to be out on its own. To me, this is going to be the best buy. This is your bang for your buck right here. And last but not least, GW have released the painting racks themselves. I think these are fantastic. They hold. Not a lot of paint pots on them, which is all fair and good because they've got to fit inside the containers. But if you're anything like me, storage is key because I've got a small family and not a lot of space because kids' toys these days are massive. So if I can store my paints easily and know where I can get them quickly when I need them, so I'm not rooting around in little tubs or if I'm having to go to the back of the cupboard I'd, ra I'd rather have a system which I know will work and not only are they good for storing they do have feet on them so you can you can aim them up so you're not looking is that possibly the grey I want is that the shade I need you can see the top of the tubs they, they and then so you know exactly the paints you've got there fantastic simple but effective so i can't say anything about these i know i'm going to be picking up a few of these they're fantastic winners this week for modeling i think this has been the the week of the week of the painter so enjoy it put your pre-orders in guys and uh tell me what you think tell me down below if you think these are good ideas if you think they're rubbish if you i don't really care because i've got a room just full of paints which i know i'm going to use or even if you turn around and say i don't really use gw paints tell me below tell me what you recommend rather than gw paints 
you know, let's have a discussion about it. Right then, guys, that's all the pre-order news for this week. It was very short, I'm sorry, but we've had more news about Wrath and Rapture, and it's got me so excited. So, let's talk about what we know so far, which we know is going to be a box set set in the realm of chaos to be released around about December time. It's pitting the armies of Corn versus Slanesh, which is two of the best factions for Chaos, in my opinion. If I'm wrong, let me know below. And what can I say? We've got new models in this box. So let's have a look at them. As we've said before, there's going to be the new fiends in the box. From what the pictures I've seen is a unit of three fiends, which is going to be amazing. These are fantastic looking models, looking even more grotesque than the original models. Not looking like derpy anteaters. These are scary beasts. I'm going to be having a look at the uh, battle scroll from later, so do stick around so we can discuss it after. But what's got me more excited than this is what I predicted when we first discussed it, which is... A new sculpt of Karnak. And I think this thing is amazing. This is everything you want your flesh hound to look like. This is a true corn character for the tabletop. This is what's got me excited about the set. I know there's going to be new fiends, there's a new herald. But Karnak is the boy. And again, because he's going to have a new sculpt, we're going to have a look at the um, battle scroll later. And I think this is good synergy in the box. So it's going to be amazing. But other things we found out are there's going to be three books. One's going to be fluff, one's going to be 40k related, and one's going to be AOS. So they're not leaving anybody out. So if you're a demon player, you want to buff your armies, this is the set to do it. From the pictures I've seen recently... It looks like there's going to be a unit of striders for Slanesh. There's going to be a unit of three fiends, as we discussed earlier. And I believe it's been mentioned that they're going to be released in future as a set of three, not just on their own. There's going to be a unit of demonettes. And it's going to be the demonic harpist herself, the Herald of Slanesh. Corn side, we're going to have a unit of three juggers. Is going to be a unit of 10 blood letters. There is also going to be, I think it's five hounds and Karnak. All these sculpts are amazing. The new flesh hounds, the fiends. For chaos, there's not a wrong thing for me. Is all these sculpts look and feel chaotic. They are exactly what you imagine when you're reading the novels and you're reading the fluff on these models. Pictures above, you can see what I mean. Is they small units, they're like a vanguard unit. But best way I, I'm looking at this is they seem to be the same the corn side and the demonette side. They seem to be the same size as a start collecting set. Except they haven't got the the big monstrous pieces, like the chariots. So, if you were using this as a starting point for AOS, and you wanted to go down the Slanesh route, or you wanted to go down the corn route, I think the best thing that will add to your army straight away would be a start collecting set. Because there's not going to be any duplication there. You've got an extra, you've got your extra footmen, You've got, you've got your fast attack, but there's no overlap on the uh, HQ front or your behemoths. It is fantastic. But if you're a, an existing player, what can be better than having new sculpts? Oh, it's just a good, it's going to be a good December for Chaos. I know the next lot of images are of the Herald herself. It's been taken from 
Colon TV and Fanatics on Twitter. This model is amazing. I know I've said this about every other thing that I've looked at today. But the detail on it. It's like she's playing the harp from his tendons. And he's just struggling to just cope with the weight of the bones. And having slanesh crotch right next to his face. This is a grotesque image. But it's amazing. I had a feeling that Slanesh was going to be torn down. Because I had the feeling that GW wanted to take a more of a kiddie friendly route. But I'm so glad they haven't. This is exactly what you want from your Slanesh. I mean, this is excess personified. Oh, I can't wait to get my hand on this box set. So guys, are you excited for Wrath and Rapture like I am? Is this going to be you a must buy for Christmas? Let me know below. Let's have a discussion about this. This is going to be amazing. Let's take this forward. Let's all start 2019. It's going to be... Let's have a chaos army each. Bring it on. But let's uh, keep the hype train rolling, guys. First up, let's have a look at the flare hounds for people who are a little rusty on their uh, hounds. Movement 8, wounds 2, save 5+, plus, bravery 10. That's a nice little foot unit for you. As you can see, their weapons are claws, range 1 inch, tax 4, 3+, plus, 4+, plus, 1 damage. They're a nice hard hitting unit. Two wounds means they can soak up a bit, but it's their abilities that I think are fantastic. So, as I scroll down, and here we got the abilities, you can read along with me. First up, Collars of Corn. This unit can attempt to unbind one spell in each enemy hero phase in the same manner as a wizard. Add one to the unbinding spell if the unit contains ten or more models. That's amazing, that's a free unbinding every turn. And it pays to have a massive unit of these. If I if those sculpts come out soon, I think I will just feel dogs everywhere. Tyler's Hunters can re-roll charge. Again, it's very important for these guys to get in. They've got to get in there quick and fast because they're going to do damage when they get in. But 5 plus save is not going to help them, so they need to get in. They need to be in a fight to get that to get a better save. And we got the locust as well, which re-rolls any unbinded attempts if this unit is within eight inches of a demon hero of corn. That is amazing. If you could get a few units around these guys and a few ten plus units, it's gonna make a difference to a wizard. Heavy armies. And who's best to have there? Well, it's none other than... Is the hero in the box himself? Karnak. As you can see, movement 8, wounds 5. He's uh, got a 4 plus save. So he's doing a little bit better on the half front. Bravery 10. And here we got his weapons, which are his ghostly claws and his savage moors. His claws are range 1, his attacks 4, he's 3 plus 4 plus and damage 1. His savage moors on the other hand are harder to hit but they pack more of a wallop. So let's have a look. Range 1, 2 attacks, 4 plus 3 plus, minus 1 rend, damage D3. That's the one that's going to make all the difference. He is going to be... At the front of your packs, leading the charge. He's going to be an unstoppable machine. Can't wait to field him. And on top of being a badass in his own right, boy's got some abilities as well. So let's have a look. He's got the Brass Caller of Bloody Vengeance, which means he can unbind a spell in the hero phase, the same manner as a wizard. If he successfully unbinds a spell, the caster immediately suffers D3 mortal wounds. That's big. That means he's got the same hatred as Corn himself. 
he's going to be a beast when you come across across your wizards. We've got Prey of the Blood God after the armies are set up. But before the first battle round begins, you can pick one enemy hero to be Karnak's quarry. You can re-roll hits and wound rolls, tax made by Karnak against our quarry. He's a hero hunter, isn't he? Corn tells him where to go. He's going to take it out, isn't he? Can you blame him? But what's going to help them is his next one. Call of the Hunt. Once per game, if Karnak is within 8 inches of a quarry during the hero phase, he can summon a unit of 5 flesh hounds to the battlefield and add it to your army. The summon unit must be set up wholly within 8 inches of Karnak and no more than 9 inches from your enemy. They cannot move in the following movement phase. But why would you need them to move? If you haven't got enough hounds on you to take out that that enemy if you were scared that he's going to uh, take you out with a spell or two summon another lot of boys in they'll have your back think of all that unbinding power just in a couple of slobbering dogs these are going to decimate legions of Nagash wizard heavy armies even the new even the new um, Sigmarites they're just they're going to be having a tough time against these boys. Which, when we read the fluff, they've got to. Because Corn he hates wizards. And it's great to see rules that show this. And it's great to have models that you're going to field and they look like they are ready to hunt. They are looking for their prey. I can't wait for Wrath and Rapture. It's going to be amazing. And it, I'm not anything other than just. So, let's have a look at the uh, Fiend of Slanesh then, is it? Movement 12, Wound 4, 5 plus save, 10 bravery. The guy's a beast. He's going to be soaking up wounds, moving around very quickly. He's going to be one to watch out for. He's like a snippy scorpion bike. It's, it's going to be a scary thing to be up against. Weapons? Let's have a look, and let's look at the weapons. Deadly pincers, range 1, 4 attacks, 4 plus to hit, 4 plus to wound, 1 damage. He's a scary looking monster. He's not going to hit you with everything he's got, but, you know, he's going to be formidable. So, he's one to watch out for, but the next attack is the one that I'm more concerned about. The barb stinger. Two inches, one attack, four plus, three plus the wound, so he's going to hit more often than the pincers. Minus one to rend, D3 damage. That's going to hit you hard. You, I hope everyone's got an army prepared to take this, because these guys are going to come in at you with full, full force. And what's left is now the uh, the abilities. We've got Vicious Pincers. If a, a wound roll for a Fiend's Deadly Pincer is 6 or more, he attacks a rend at minus 2. So if he, you get that lucky roll, he's hitting harder than ever. Oh, I don't want to be on the wrong side of these guys. You've got the Musk. I'm not even saying the first word because I'll end up tripping over it and I'll have to retake this about 15 times. Minus one to hit any target or a Phoenix Lanesh is in close combat with. So these guys are going to come in. They're not going to hit you with everything, but they're going to tie you up. Probably a good thing that's their four, their four wounds then, isn't it? Last but not least, the Locust of Grace. You can re-roll hits of a one if it's within six inches of a demon hero Slanesh. And who's better to orchestrate all this? Than the herald herself on her harp with that poor boy lugging around with his head by a chuff. And to be honest, guys, that's it. I am so excited. I will see you Wednesday with another law video. But until then, I've got the shill at the end. So thank you again. I will see you Wednesday. And that's it, guys. End of the video. Thank you for being part of this. Like I say all the time, like, comment, subscribe means a lot to me perhaps i can get out to the 
wider audience as well. So people can hear my Welsh ranting. If you agree or disagree, please tell me below. If you got an idea about what we can do, tell me below as well. See if I can implement it. But also, we've set up a PayPal account for the channel. And recently this week, we've also got a Patreon account. There's not a lot on there at the moment. Because I don't feel I'm bringing you 100%. But there is a tea flowing tier of just $1. Please, even if, you, if it's 50p, if you've got the spare shekels, please, it will help the channel. And... Who knows where we take this channel in future. But I am nothing on this channel without you guys' support. So please like, comment, subscribe. If you could go that little bit extra, please. But you don't have to. The channel will stay as it is. And hopefully in 2019, it's going to be a bigger year for us. It's just keep your, keep your eyes on the, on the channel. Keep your ears open. And please, just feel free to interact. Is email down below. There's the Instagram. There's the comment section. There's direct messaging on YouTube. Just get in contact. Be part of it. This is as much of mine as it is yours. Let's do it together. And from me, good night.